Welcome to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast, hosted by Craig Phillips and Jeff Torrey. Visit us at FantasyFootballProfit.com. And now your hosts, Craig and Jeff. Welcome everyone to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast. I'm Craig Phillips, joined as always by Jeff Torrey. And today we are talking quarterbacks. We're into our rankings episodes now, at least, at least some initial rankings. We'll do a little more in depth later on. Um, but we're going to do top 15 quarterbacks today. Just try to, you know, give you an idea of where we're at. No one's probably drafting today. I would hope not, you know, if you're doing redraft. But if you are, it's a little risky. But let's, let, we're going to give you an idea of what we're thinking this far. Um, yeah, two months from draft, two and a half months from draft time. But there's still going to be some movement. I have not seen Jeff's list yet. He hasn't seen my list yet. I'm really curious what we're thinking here because um, there's all kinds of things that could be, you know, I don't know if there's a lot of like good quarterbacks this year. Um, I think the number one is pretty much set, but there's a lot of movement after that, I believe. Yeah. There's, there's an incredibly deep position. And and I feel like this has been like uh, years in the past where I'm, I'm not overly confident in, in grabbing a guy early because I think you can get value later and I'd rather get it for like running back or wide receiver, but I'd like to hear what you say because things have changed young quarterbacks have been moving up and showing out. So I do think there is guys that you can get any tier. And if you really like one, I think there's a case to be made for, you know, know, probably uh, honestly top 10, you could literally make it a case for. So uh, anyway, who do you have at number one? So my number one is Josh Allen. I I just think it's as well. Yeah. I think, I mean, he, he has, he has that running ability. He gets those touchdowns, but he's a good passer. He has, Stefan Diggs to throw the ball to he it just pretty much it he has everything going for him right now right at this position um I just don't think you can go wrong with him problem is like we've will I draft him mm, I, I just don't know if he's going third round I think it was I pulled up um, my latest uh I can pull this up which actually is part of our uh draft guide cheat sheet we're going to have come out at the end of this month for you guys but I put together my ADP for that and if I would, you know, draft them at that level. Currently, when I put that together, Josh Allen was going 12th pick in the second. He was going 2.12. That's too early for me. And I did list him as an overvalued player at that point. Not because I don't think he's a good player. For me personally, and I think the way I like to draft, I can't draft quarterback in the second, beginning of the third. And as much as I think he's going to be great, can't do it. Yeah, and and look, the last four years, uh, when he was a rookie, he didn't, he only played twelve games. He was still twenty first, then sixth, then he's been first uh, the last two years. I, I think that's going to continue. There's nothing really that changed. You still have Diggs, like you said. Now Dawson Knox at tight end is healthy again. They also added OJ Howard. They added Crowder as like a slot receiver, which should be very useful to him, even if we don't think Crowder's you know his pristine self. And on top of that, they had they. <laughs> The only thing they did in the run game, which could have hurt his stock, is they, they did add one guy, but his biggest thing is he's going to be a pass catcher in, in James Cook. So I, I feel like all they did was put more weapons in front of him in order to be like, if injuries occur, you're even more bulletproof. So I, I think he's not only the safest one, but he also has the highest stealing. They're also geared up to make a run for the title as they got Von Miller and, and their defense is pretty stocked. So they're just a very, very good team. This one is not risky, high end, uh, yep. you know, ceiling. So I don't think anyone's going to disagree with, with Allen. Um, he showed he can already do it. Yep. So I, I think after Allen, I think that this is, it's unbelievable. Usually at number two, there's not a huge debate, but yep. I think you could go with probably three, four guys really. And I was going to say, and, and for me, number two, I actually went for a safer pick and someone, and I, I think that this one, maybe you'll disagree with, but I actually went Mahomes, even though he lost Tyreek Hill, because I, I believe in the arm strength. I believe in his ability. I think that the team as a whole is a little stronger offensive line. Um, will he miss Tyreek? Absolutely. But I don't think that much like Aaron Rodgers, I don't think that uh, one player will will completely throw him off his game. I think he still has quite a few guys to throw to. And I think that if you can give him a little time in the pocket, he'll find someone regardless. So I I like Mahomes. I think he's relatively safe. Do I think that he's guaranteed at number two? No, but I I don't think that he will ever fall out of like the top eight. And I think that his upside is still there. Um, I had Mahomes as well. Okay. With you there. Um, In, 
expert consensus on fantasy pros, he's three right now. Mm-hmm. But I mean, yes, he did lose Tyreek, but he still has Kelsey. Juju's like people just like are just completely just disregarding that signing. I feel like, and, and there's just no talk about Juju Smith Schuster, and I think he's a good player. I think it's going to help. It's I mean, Mahomes should be Kelsey, Juju Smith Schuster. Um, well, who else? Valdez Scantling, you know. I mean, they, they, just, they, yeah, they can throw the ball around. Mahomes is going to throw the ball around. I, I think. Well, again, the bigger question: Will I draft him where he's going? Probably yeah, I not. Won't. Probably not. <laughs> but I but think to be he fair, should, to me, he's I'm still not, the second quarterback. Yeah, to be fair, I'm not drafting a quarterback early. That would be very unusual for me, yeah. unless Josh Allen dropped. Um, and that I guess that is the thing, Patrick Mahomes. Maybe for whatever reason, because Tyreek is gone, and yeah. you, the people in your specific league, this will not be a uh, this will not be a fantasy world type of overall thing. But he could fall in your draft, like he could end up as the number four or five, depending on when that quarterback goes. Then all of a sudden, I'm like, well, yeah, why not? Like, you know, if uh, the other guy like, and going to number three, because we'll start talking about all these other guys. Yep. There is upside, and there is arguments to be made. And I don't know if you have number three, but I have Herbert, which I, I think will be a hot commodity. Yep. I got Herbert okay. there as well. Yep. I, I think he seems relatively safe, but it's not like he's without question marks. He's not a sure thing every week. He's had some, he has some down weeks, no. but he has Keenan Allen to throw the ball to Mike Williams to throw the ball to feel pretty good about that. Austin yes. Eckler to throw the ball to. I, I I say Austin really Eckler is, it, yeah. is the big one for me. I yeah. think that's the safety blanket and, and hundred percent Keenan Allen is a great possession guy. He's done it in and out. They re-signed Mike Williams, which is huge, even though, he has not, if he ends up having a breakout year and I, he's been up and down so much, but if he establishes himself, then Herbert has nowhere to go, but up. And I think that even though he's a little more risky, um, then, you know, it, it's kind of like this next slot. I feel like there is risk to yep. every single one of these guys. I'll but, say those first, I think Herbert has the highest ceiling. The first three, um, that is the top three that are on in expert consensus. That's the top three in ADP. And actually, in ADP, it's Allen, Mahomes, Herbert, just like we ranked them there. So it, we're, we're right along with ADP right now in our top yeah. three. Expert and that makes sense. Strong, but, and, and, and I'll say Fancy Bros considers that tier one as well. And I, I, I would, too. I, I, think. I, I do. In my head, I, almost, I do think. I do, do you think, think Josh, Josh Allen is his own one? Yeah. And then I think yeah. those two guys next are tier two. That's I how can, I, I can see it. that. Yep, I can see that. So And after, then it opens up a next tier. Yeah, so. I have a feeling we're going to be all over. The yeah, board you can, so you who do you have be. at number four? So my number four, if I didn't lose my list already, I, <laughs> I put Lamar Jackson. Um, okay, I, I had a feeling this was going to be the one that we had the biggest discrepancy on. Yep. Because I'm actually relatively low on Lamar this year, and that's, that is going to be more me. Every list Part, I see, he's pretty high in the top five. So I have I him all it. the way down at number nine. I mean, he lost Marquise Brown. I, I get yeah. it. Uh, I'm just right here. It's me basically like banking on the running ability. Still going to be okay, there. So He's still going to do that for me. That's where, that's where back, I'm at now. Yes. If he comes back and he runs it the way he did, like his ro- sophomore season, then yep. I will be wrong on this. And, and I'm okay with that. But I do have to say for Lamar, the thing that like worries me about him, I'm a big fan. I really love what he's able to do. But it does feel like they – like teams have, they haven't figured out how to completely stop him, but they have figured out how to corral him. And, and you can see that in like the stats, as far as how people have played Baltimore and just how many times he's thrown the ball, how many times he's rushed the ball. It really has not changed over the last three years. Like um, uh, uh, attempts. <clears throat> um, let's see here. Even yards per carry. Um, the last three years has been in the 11s. Um, yards on the attempt has been in the sevens. Uh, really, the only thing that has changed is he go. He hasn't rushed it nearly as many times, and uh, he hasn't been able to rush as many TDs in because they're kind of playing off of him. Yeah. That could change now that they had J.K. Dobbins and and their running backs are healthy again. That really could change a lot. Um, but it worries me that you give away your best wide receiver, <clears throat> and so if once again you kind of turn completely one dimensional. I don't think that's going to bode well for him. And, and the thing that really worries me on top of that is we saw him kind of get banged up last year. He is wonderful yeah. at unbelievable at not getting hit the big hit, but he still runs a lot and people are going to be trying to get him. You miss a couple of games and all of a sudden it, it kind of changes things. So if you're not elite, um, yeah. you come with a little bit of a risk 
And that is where I have him down at number nine, because I, that's kind of where he's been. He had that one year where he was unbelievable. Uh, and he was number one overall, I believe. Yeah, in, in 2019. But the last two years, 2020, he was 10th. And I, he didn't get hurt. And then last year, he missed out on three, four games. And he was 16th. So I'm, I'm, he's wonderful, but I'm, I'm backing off a little bit and saying, if he's there at number nine, great. Like later in the top 10, I'm taking him without a doubt but I'm probably also supplementing with another QB. And you know, I have to take that into account as I, uh, <clears throat> as I draft, because that takes away another spot. So. Yeah. I'm, I can see him moving down my ranks as we get closer. And I re- I don't like the risk factor. Maybe right now it is a little riskier rank because there's some guys below him that I just feel safer about. So it's more of an upside mm-hmm. play at four. Again, will I draft him there? Eh, it just it depends. Right, right, right. Probably, <clears throat> probably not. I'm probably going to end up with some guys below him. That's probably where I'm at. So who was your, your fourth guy then? Number number four for me is Kyler Murray. Okay, um, and Murray's my also, five. Okay, so. he also comes with um, some question marks, to be quite honest. Hopkins is going to be missing the first half of the season, but they added yep. Hollywood Brown, which I love. They played together in college. Kyler has definitely um, been getting better and better, but he, he still has – He's, he hasn't really been able to put a whole season together. Yeah, I say he starts great, right? It, it, like the team in general has. Yeah. And then they've kind of fallen off towards the end of the year. So they, let's see. If they we were not that great together. in the end of the year. No. And they, they did not. have a lot of older players, which I do think that they have addressed by – because Hopkins should come and he should be relatively healthy in the second half of the year. So that's wonderful for him. Hollywood mm-hmm. Brown is a younger guy. I think he's going to be great there. Um, you, They drafted um, the tight end, right? They drafted McBride, I believe which I think can come in right away. And they also have Ertz still. Um, and then you have Rondo Moore. I, I do think you have enough tools where last year you're kind of like a Hopkins that was mm-hmm. kind of banged up and AJ Green that was just over the hill. Uh, you know, Christian Kirk, which I'm, I was always lukewarm on. <laughs> so I, I like what they've, what they've done as far as giving Kyler Murray enough weapons this year. And then he can always run a bit as well. And that's not going to ever leave his game. Uh, same thing with Lamar. He's going to have to. Um, if he gets hurt, he gets hurt kind of for me, but I do think he has more upside as far as passing. So I feel a little bit better about him. That's why he shows up at number four. Yeah. Um, the only thing is hopefully he gets some, some more rushing touchdowns last year. He had rushing touchdowns in the first three weeks of the season, which was awesome. And then he had those week one, two, and three week 13. He had two touchdowns. That was the only other week he had touchdowns. So it was yeah. rushing. So we'll see. We'll see. It was a, just a weird year for Arizona. They started out great. And then just, yeah, they won with their first seven games, I think, and then it really tailed off. Yeah, and most of these quarterbacks do have stretches where they maybe they don't play as well or they're going to be more rush heavy. That That's just the nature of the beast, unless you get, you know, Josh Allen was kind of the only guy that didn't have a slump. <laughs> so <laughs> That's true. So what do you got at number five? Because I had Kyler at five. So who's so your have, number five? I actually have, I have Joe Burrow here. Okay. Um, a little bit of a stretch, but at the same time, I really love the weapons he has. I love that they did try to address the O line in the off season. I'm not saying I'm not sure if it's going. It doesn't turn them into like the greatest offensive line in the league, but I'm hoping that it it does enough to really help them out. You do have um, Joe Mixon in the backfield, and what they were able to do down the stretch. I'm hoping that they don't have too much of a hangover from the Super Bowl loss, but down the stretch, they were really dynamic in the past game. And that's when they were starting to blow people out. So I'm hoping they lean on Burrow like that um, mm-hmm. more often. And, and with Jamar Chase and T Higgins, and they, they have enough firepower to definitely stretch the field and go deep. I like his upside more than I like some of the older players I have right after him. So I'm, I'm willing to take that risk that he's going to take one more step forward. I, I really liked what I saw at the end of the year last year. I put him at eight, so only a couple spots below you. There's just some other guys we'll talk about in a minute that I have here that I feel safe about too. I mean, th- but this is the, that's the part. This stretch of players is I, you could put Burrow at th- at four, and I'd be like, sure, go do it. Yeah, and or if you, you want to put him at, at, at ten, you could you could argue I'd be that. Like, okay, yeah. there's this, there's a good grouping here of players that you yes. can put wherever. And, so Burrow, and I love Burrow, and but yes, and and you'll see this too. I mean, th- this is why I'm like I I'm very well. I know that Joe Burrow is like I said a stretch, a little more of a question mark comparatively. But you, but you have the same him at time, ADP. I'm, Yes, I'm, I'm, that is yeah, that too. Right now. I'm willing to take that risk for for the young guy. I think that he showed really high upside. So after, so at number five, who did you have? I had Murray at five. Kyle okay, you have Murray at five. Who do you yep. have at six then? So I put, okay, I don't know how people are going to feel about this, but I have Aaron Rodgers. 
way ahead of ADP or way ahead of consensus. And I just, I, I get it. There's no Devonte Adams. That's where, that's where this um, yeah. rank goes down. But every year we just love that. Let's just rank Rogers lower every year and ranking him 12th this year. That's where he is on, on fantasy pros right now. So I'm going way up. And part of it is I'm not as worried about the wide receiver situation. I know it's, it's a little interesting right now. Right. But they have, Oh, this is good. I mean, I'm going to get sick by saying this, but they have Sammy Watkins, um, <laughs> Alan Lazard, Christian Watson. Let's see what he can do. And to be honest, I, I a hundred percent expect them to sign somebody and that what somebody is probably Julio Jones. It just feels in my, I, it just feels like yeah. a spot. And I wouldn't be shocked if I mean, they wouldn't sign would he, Odell. Where else would he go? Yeah, yeah I was going to say they're going. I feel like Odell will play or like Odell will be like a halfway through the yeah. season type thing. But I can see Julio with the with the with the Packers. I just feels like the fit to me. And because that, you know what, Aaron Rodgers, I don't even have to. I don't, but the beauty of it, I don't have to draft him at six. I can just wait and get him. And I'm probably yeah. going to look at doing that again this year. And just hopefully, he's still Aaron Rodgers and the no Devonte Adams doesn't kill his season. But Aaron Rodgers six for me. Yeah, I okay, and I I don't really have a problem with that. And I am one of the people that ranked him lower. I do have him at twelve. Okay, that's where uh, that's his again, consensus rank right now. Yeah, and and but I have him ranked there um, right now without them drafting another uh, wide receiver, or I'm sorry, yep. getting a wide receiver for free agency. If they end up signing another one, then he will move up because there's probably two yep. guys that he would leapfrog immediately. Um, my my worry is because they they're going to have a very good team and he doesn't have to ball out in order to and put up huge numbers in order to be Aaron Rodgers Mm -hmm. I think he can be that game manager and I I worry that they will run it very efficiently and that will not necessarily take away from the his attempts but I do wonder in the red zone if all of a sudden we see a lot more Aaron Jones good um and it takes away his his touchdown total and that's that's what I'm worried without without Devante I don't I and I love Christian Watson but I, he was so deadly in the red zone and you would go to him for 10 touchdowns. Yeah. I mean, you could lose out on those completely and yeah, he'll yeah. still be fine, but he could end up with high twenties or like 30 yeah. compared to 42 <laughs> and then we're in trouble. Right. So, so um, at this point, I think I know everyone ahead of him in your ranks. So I feel like it goes yeah, to 12. So, all right. Let's, <laughs> what, what was your, um, what was your six then? I actually have Russell Wilson. Okay. And, and see, I have Wilson. This is, you, this is a, you can interchange these guys. I have Wilson 10. I was going to say, we're, we're going to be all over the place. I had a feeling. So Russell, the reason I have him this high, and I started him lower, and then I, I kept making the case for him over other, other guys. And um, the thing that really stood out to me, obviously moving to a new team is huge. Um, DK and Lockett that he had before were great weapons. Um, is it that much of an upgrade to go to Sutton and Judy? We will find out. I, I, I really like the situation a lot better. I think that they have a better overall team, which should really help. They do have a good run game, which should help them as well. Um, but the big one is they like in Seattle, they just didn't throw it nearly as much. And when he has been able to throw the ball like 550 times, he has been successful, but that's not always the case in Seattle. They, they were a very run heavy team, a defensive minded team. Um, so he kind of did what they were asking of him. And in, you know, 2020, he threw 40 touchdowns. Um, that is much more in line with what I think he's going to do. Probably high thirties is probably more accurate, but he's very capable of throwing for over, you know, easy over 4,000 yards and close to 40 touchdowns. I, I honestly believe that's what he's going to do. I, I think that he gets closer to 600 attempts rather than his 550 that he's used, used to. And most of these guys that are really elite, um, they're throwing the ball in an, an incredible amount. And just to give you an idea of that, um, I have him up already, but like Aaron Rodgers, and this is why he's so darn good. Um, the last four years, his attempts, uh, 597, 569, 526, and 531. And that is not even... Uh, you know, the, the upper echelon of people throwing it. He just happens to be incredibly efficient. But if we go to someone that will show, at least show up on mine, but if we go to someone like Tom Brady, which is a, a reason you can amp him up in Tampa Bay, the last, we'll just do the last four years. His attempts were 570. And you're kind of like, oh, that's not huge. 
613, 610 last year when he just led the league and everything, he threw the ball 719 times. That's insane. As a 44 year old. Wow. So, I mean, so that is the thing where I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm like, if Russell is able to throw 600 times, his numbers are going to be pretty darn good. So that, that is why I, I like him a lot more um, than one of these other guys, because I don't think we've, we've seen all that he can do. And I, I don't, I, I like Russell a lot, and, but I'd end up going with some guys that are more established on their teams out of him. That was the only reason because, because yeah. at this point I needed a reason to rank people certain ways. And I'm like, all right, I'll use this justification. Right. And that's where I went. So I'll go to my yep. number seven then, who is Tom Brady. I have Tom Brady up at seven. And we're back together. I have Tom Brady at yeah. seven as well. And so you <laughs> know what? I decided I'm done. I am done um, doubting him. And I know this will be the year he falls off. Everything falls apart. Fine. Yeah. Right. But I'm done doubting him. That's all I'm going to say. I'm well, done doubting Tom Brady. In, and I'll yeah, say this. 40, I, 45. Yeah. He's going to, yeah, I know at 45. He is going to be the guy that, um, at seven, I, I feel good about taking him and he he could drop depending on where, because he's old, you know I mean? Like 45 is, is pretty wild. No one knows exactly what to happen. I can make an argument against the guy because he has had better weapons in the past. People are aging with him. Uh, Antonio Brown, no longer there. Um, you know, uh, Mike Evans is still there. That's great. But Godwin's going to be coming off of a, a major yeah. injury. So yeah. all of a sudden it does feel like, uh, you know, for Annette is a, an aging back uh yeah. we don't know if gronk is really going to be back and we don't know if he's going to be his healthy self even though he probably will but he plays in spurts so i do wonder if this year uh he will have just not as many easy targets to go to and this is also kind of why i like mike evans for the you know i don't think he's being over over drafted for the first time in the last three years because i'm like sure. who else are you going to like right so yeah, anyway exactly he, he was incredible last year. The amount of touchdowns, the amount of attempts, uh, he can take a big hit in both and he would still be uh, easily in the top seven. So I, I really, I'm, I'm with you. I, I like Tom and there's no reason for me to doubt him. Like he came back no, for anymore. a reason and, and you know, if whatever. So if, if he, if he, you know, implodes he off. or whatever, it, then it, I'm, I'm willing to take that risk. Yeah. I'm not going to take him above seven, but I think that he could fall out of the top 10 in some drafts. And then I scoop them up for nothing and I'm laughing to the bank. So I had a burrow at eight. So who's your eight? Jalen hurts. Okay. And I have a feeling this one might be different for us too. I don't know. Do you have him in the top 10? I have him 12. He's, he's okay. my 12. And so. I, and I do get that. He is one of the bigger question marks. He has just been able to uh, produce in fantasy, even when I don't believe he's being a good quarterback. I, I don't think he's going to stop running the ball. <clears throat> I think he'll still have high touchdown um, ability. And even more so, I know you don't believe in A.J. Brown as much as I do. I think they paid him all that money. I think he will help his numbers regardless whether or not A.J. Brown, you know, gets back to where he was you know, a couple of years ago in Tennessee. His, he just has a knack for making plays. So I think if, if A.J. Brown is able to catch, say, eight touchdowns, um, that is only going to up his uh, touchdowns thrown. And I think he'll just make all of his numbers go up. And he's pretty much a, a top 10 guy just because of the way he plays, which is a little bit crazy, but for fantasy, it's very good. So I, I couldn't, I couldn't downgrade him any more than eight, even though yeah. he has some real flaws in his game. I just feel more confident, I guess, more comfortable with some of the guys ahead of him, but that's why I just put him at 12, which is kind of the bottom. I think of this QB one tier that we're going through right here. So that's always, yeah. I put him there. So let's see, I, my number or your number nine was Lamar Jackson, I believe, right? Yep. So my number nine yep. is Matthew Stafford and he okay. is 11th, I think on rankings. So I'm a couple of spots ahead. And part of it is just, I mean, he was great last year and I just don't know if the running of game, even if with acres, I don't know how good that's going to be. I think they're going to throw the ball a lot. And Cooper cup's going to keep benefiting from it. And Stafford's going to keep throwing the ball around. I mean, and they got Allen Robinson now too. I'm just not going to doubt Stafford either. And it's, I think this is one where it's just really safe. You are just in a safe spot. If you get Matthew Stafford, you might, maybe doesn't have the upside of these top guys, but he could, but you're just, you're going to be good. You're, you feel pretty yeah. confident in Matthew Stafford. Yeah. I do think that he's very safe. I, I personally like the addition of Allen Robinson. I know a lot of people are overlooking that one. You have Cooper cup. Great. I agree with you on the run game. I don't know what it's going to look like, to be quite honest. I'm not as high on Cam Akers as a lot of people are. Um, my only my only ding on on Stafford is as wonderful as he was last year. Um, <clears throat> you know, he he had 
you know, C- Cooper Cup had one of the all-time great years ever for a wide receiver. And Matt Stafford was still number six. So I, I feel like he has to go down. I have him at number 11, yeah. but I have no issue. Like him being in the top 10 is whatever. Like there's five guys that right. once again, you can jumble around, but um, yeah, so I, I, I worry about the Super Bowl hangover. I worry about yeah. Cup not being hit, like not being the all-time great that he was last year. <laughs> And then if I'm wrong on Allen Robinson, then we could be in a, a rough predicament. But I don't think that's the case. I think that he is incredibly safe. But at that point, you start wondering, do I take the safe one or do I go for upside? And I think that's where I'm kind of like, all right, where, where are they really going to land um, mm-hmm. when, when, the, when we get to draft time? But, so yeah. we, we got about a minute left. So okay. a little speed around here. Is, is Dak your number 10? Dak is number 10. Okay. Yep. So, yep. Dak's your 10. He's my 11. Um, so that's a, that's the 12. That's the QB one tier. It's perfect. Right. Those are the 12 guys. It's just four through 12 is just a jumble of where the, who we have where. Right. Yes. Yep. And that's just, I mean, yeah, it is. It's just what it is. Right. They're just completely, completely jumbled. It's just all over the place. So let's go to 13 then through 15. Just knock them out real quick. Yep. Um, my, I'll go my 13 to 15, Derek Carr, Kirk Cousins, Deshaun Watson. Okay. And the only person I have different, I have Deshaun Watson. I think at 13, assuming he's going to miss time. Yeah. I'm still yep. fine taking him at number 13 and then, then supplementing and getting another one. That'd be awesome. Yep. Derek Carr is number 14. Devontae Adams, maybe he can make that jump. Yeah. And at 15, I put Tua because okay. of all the weapons. And, I'm, and I'm two willing is 16. to take the risk. Yeah. I have two at 60. One guy that didn't make I our top Kirk 15. 16, so yeah. <laughs> well, I say one guy real quick before we get cut off that didn't yeah. make our top 15 that made that is ADP top 15, consensus top 15. Trey Lance. I don't want to touch that. So do I have Trey Lance at 24? I, I, yeah, there, good. In good. no world am I picking him. No. But all right, there we go. Top 15 quarterbacks. Look for it on Instagram, put some lists out for you. You can see and go to fantasyfootballprofit.com, see the full. Full rankings list. I got my full list up there, but all right, that'll do it. Talk to you guys next time.